Yo, my peoples, what's up? Welcome back to Shelf Stories, the channel that tells tales from games, books, and life. I have another chat for you today. Uh, I have some friends. They've been my friends for years up here in Connecticut. Um, they've been on my show every night. It's game night before the old show. And now they're here on Shelf Stories doing the YouTube thing. So I'd like to welcome back first, Mr. Brant Sanderson uh, of the Dice Tower of the Portal Gaming Podcast. <laughs> he is Mr. Excitement himself. Welcome back to the show, Brant. Yes. Thank you, Jason, for having <laughs> me. No, just kidding. <laughs> thanks it's it's good to be here and chatting with you because yeah i mean it's like we saw each other once a week twice a month and that's nothing it's nothing now it's like i i think <laughs> I, I think i went have we seen each other in person in 2020 uh since march have we seen each other in person i don't know you did some game nights at my house but that was probably in 2019 <laughs> oh you came to the super, super bowl, bowl. Super Bowl, yes, that would be Super Bowl. Oh my God, I've seen you at the Super Bowl party at my house. That's horrendous, my God. <laughs> I have seen this other man, uh, the water to Brant's fire. He is Mr. Calm, Cool, and Collected. He is the owner of the Portal Gaming Store up in Manchester, Connecticut, one of the best. Uh, and I'm not saying that just because you're sitting right here. It is one of the <laughs> best gaming stores uh, in the land, uh, America and beyond. I will put it up against any gaming store that you can name. Uh, yeah. This man is Brian Raditz. Welcome to the show, Brian. Hi, thanks for having me. Yeah, we just saw each other the other day. Yeah. So that was good. <laughs> <laughs> I went to the store and I did my, you know, do uh, thing, you know, for local game stores. And I purchased a couple of games that I was looking for. So uh, no Amazon for me. I went up to the store and I went, uh, picked some things up. Um, Actually, before we get, I'm glad you mentioned that because before we get started, uh, I do have a topic and the topic is Brian owns a game store, Brent works for a game store. How are you guys doing it in the land of pandemic, in the land of COVID or whatever's going on? How are you doing it? However, before we get to that topic, I want to hear about what you're playing. This is the gaming channel. We're all very excited about what we're playing. Um, and uh, I, I know, Brent, I know what you're playing. So I'm just going <laughs> to hold off on you for now. It's really just <laughs> It's crazy. Yeah, that's like the only game I'm playing right now, is, <laughs> which is Marvel Champions, in case people are wondering. Like, Flesh and Blood smattered in there. The yeah. game, okay, f fine. You, you, you let it off. I'll, I'll, let you, I'll let you go on that one a little bit, Brand. Um, so if you go, um, so one of the things the portal has done to kind of change with the times is they've launched their own YouTube channel. You can go over to uh, and check out the portal. Uh, Brant and Larry, who also works for the store, have game playthroughs. And if you go on there, you're going to see a lot of of marvel champions lcg so the red skull expansion came out um you can listen to brand on the portal gaming uh, podcast he's talked about it on that podcast before but just very quickly and i'm gonna have to cut you off if you go on too long <laughs> very quickly tell the people what you're enjoying about the new set and uh, everything they've released so far oh yeah um i mean as far as the youtube channel we were just trying to find a way to get people like into the store so we call it step into the portal which has always kind of been my slogan on the podcast uh and it's an opportunity for people to see games that we played there's actually a bunch more games than just marvel champions on there but marvel champions just started doing so well we were getting a lot of views so we decided to just make it a weekly thing uh but yeah the new campaign came out the, the campaign part isn't like the most amazing thing so people who are looking for like a really strong story driven campaign it's not there but Straight up, it's, it's three new straight heroes. games of Marvel Champions. Let's be real, <laughs> with a couple yeah. of changes here and there. It's, uh, like the, when when you release a campaign mode, um, one big box expansion and seven little box expansions later, you know it's not going to be a huge deal. Yeah. So there's two new heroes and five new villains. The five new villains basically double the number of villains in the game, so it gives you double the number of things to play, which is really awesome. I actually enjoy the campaign. I like it because you could play the campaign in a single night. In fact, you can go to our YouTube channel and we played it from 9 p.m. to 1 a.m. in the morning the day we got it. So uh, that was what was happening. But yeah, we've, we've got a bunch of other things. We started playing all these two-player, I know I'm supposed to let you talk, but I'm not going to. We, we started playing all these two-player dueling card games because it was like we were working on the store and we'll kind of get to that. And then it's like, let's take a break and play this two-player dueling card game. We went back through all these games and all these things we've been playing. And I'm, I'm totally on a kick of all these card games and two-player games. Mm -hmm. I'm not playing three and four-player, two-hour, three-hour Euros because we just don't have the clientele for that. So. Right. 
Mm-hmm. So, Brian, uh, what have uh, obviously Marvel Champions is the is the star of the show for Brian. Um, I guess if you, if you could name one game that you've enjoyed more than any over this uh, quarantine time, uh, what what do you think it would be? Yeah, so I've gotten a chance to play a lot of stuff that like like with my with my son, he's five now. So we played we played a lot of King of Tokyo of late. So that's actually been really good. Mm-hmm. You know, he's he's strategizing. Obviously, it's mostly him just trying to you know, knock me out <laughs> and roll all the claws that he can. But right. we played that. We did the like the dark edition, which adds a little bit to it, you know, so there's kind of that nuance so, there. Actually describe, because I don't know a lot about it. I don't know what like the state of King of Tokyo is now. So maybe describe like, because I know there's monster packs and they released that dark yeah. edition. So what's what's new? Okay, so <laughs> like the, the newest one is essentially that same sort of like Yahtzee, uh, King of the Hill type of thing with, you know, Godzilla, King Kong, all that sort of stuff. But the the newest edition adds a little bit. So, like, the worst things you could roll now give you a little bit of a boost. Okay. So it kind of, like, ramps you up a little bit, and you, you at least have something going for you, even if it's, like, the worst thing from, like, the, the original game, you know? Yeah, the original um, game, you could roll, like, 2, 2, 1, 1, 3, heart <laughs> at full health, and just have Okay, nothing. well, that's worse. That doesn't help you. Uh, <laughs> Uh, like essentially, if you roll three of three ones, now you get a little bit of a, you get a different form of currency, like a I forget what the <laughs> like a corruption t- sort of thing. Mm-hmm. Basically, you're moving up and getting more powers as you get, you know, those lower tier <laughs> rolls. You know, so we've done that. We've done some of the like, I mean, they've got a ton of monster packs out there. Like, so yeah. we got a demo copy in like at the beginning of all this, uh, and then. I broke that out and he had a ton of fun. Then I went to my copy that has like everything. And I was like, let me open this up. I haven't opened it up in a long time. I pulled the top off and like, you know, monsters are just falling out of the box. And it's like <laughs> this huge stack with all these, you know, all these different, like, um, you know, all the, the monster cards, the upgrade cards, all that sort of stuff. So right. we haven't gone, we haven't fully dove into all that stuff especially with him like anything with text is a little less consistent but yeah it's he's been loving it and it's just been (laughs) it's been a really good one to play with at least the two of us obviously more works well too so it's my go-to gateway game uh, in therapy when i want to play um with somebody who is anxious as a matter of fact it's, it's funny that like a really anxious person will will like i really gravitate towards the six chunky dice and it actually kind of feels good at a tactile level, to, you know, to do that. And obviously, like, you know, it appeals to the kids too, but it actually appeals to the adults. Like, they're, they're sitting there, like, between the turn, and I give them, like, you know, I have, like, the Halloween dice. So, like, you have the Halloween dice, and I'll take the regular dice. And they're sitting there like this the entire time <laughs> while they're waiting for my turn to go. And, like, it's such an underrated thing about that game. I, I, I mean, I, I haven't gotten into the new stuff because my, my kid doesn't love, like, this <laughs> stuff yet. I can't get her to convert. Um, but when it happens, oh man, so I'm, I, I looks like I'm in for it. We we'd be super remiss though if we're talking about gaming during COVID and we didn't mention the crew. <laughs> yeah, because so crew, we yes. have the benefit that a lot of other people don't have. So my family and Brian's family live together right now uh, as they're like this close to getting a house. Yes, um, and uh, so we played four player the crew with our wives Kathy and Rachel, and we did all fifty missions, and it was awesome like uh, everybody was being, all in every night we playing. haven't reviewed it on shelf stories the crew is a cooperative uh trick-taking game which yeah. there are not many a lot of those uh and it's a very very simple game it takes what like three minutes to play through a, a trick or whatever it is and then you reset and everything so you can pound through you, you say 50 games that's like what three nights two nights uh, it took us 99 plays to beat oh. all 50 <laughs> missions um and it was like over two weeks it was like 10 nights 10 games a night i don't think it's three minutes i feel like it's more like five to ten minutes of well, with you sometimes well sometimes it's 30 seconds because i <laughs> played right. the wrong card <laughs> uh, no, no, the yeah, crew is excellent yeah it, it gave us a good amount of, like, it was there was a lot of a lot of gameplay in that box but it was also just you know it it worked so smoothly yeah. uh, like there were a couple times where we had to play it like you know <laughs> Well, it was like maybe like 10 times for the mission just to kind of get that through. So, but we didn't mind going back to it and it was just, yeah, it was a ton of fun. So, mm-hmm. 
No, I, I, re- I reviewed the queue on the old podcast. It was excellent. Um, if, I, I, if I would love to do a playthrough on that, but I need people. Yeah. <laughs> I can't solo the crew. That'd be a little silly. The other thing that I would just, just to push our podcast a little bit, if I can. Sure, absolutely. Is, Pro- if you listen uh, to the Portal Gaming podcast, yes. so we actually took uh, some days with Larry and we were kind of like elsewhere. It was kind of like Gen Con weekend. And we just kind of hit away and played a whole bunch of games and then talked through the games we played each day. Right. Kind of like we would at a Gen Con with just whatever we had coming in from the store that we were kind of picking up or demos mm-hmm. that came in. So people can listen to those three days, which I think like there was like 26 games we played over those three days. So there's a lot of just initial impressions on those. Dude, you are a machine. I can't <laughs> believe after, because I, I, like, I moved to Connecticut in 2016. 2016 and I met you guys shortly thereafter and you were a machine at that point I remember like you taught me like pack something or other and like you were just like zipping from t- teach to teach to teach you know all these games and like since then you have not your engine for gaming has not petered out like once <laughs> I, I I'm not that I've seen anything like that I, I have no idea what your secret is I like when COVID hit I bottomed out I didn't play anything <laughs> Yeah. What is your secret, yeah, I mean, man? No, it's been tough, though. It's been tough to get things played. I mean, this the Shining Stars are obviously Marvel Champions, but that really is a last year game. But the crew and then Gloomhaven Jaws of the Lion, yeah. we've been playing a bunch of. But again, it just feels like you're talking about Gloomhaven again. It's like the Marvel Champions wagon, you know? Um, but But the best part of that game is just how it brings people into the game, which right. is so good. Awesome. So go ahead and check out uh, so many things. Portal on the YouTube, um, Portal Gaming 60 is the Twitter and Portal, the, the store and the website and the, the podcast. And like, there's so much uh, Portal out there. Uh, if you guys want to uh, check that all out and Brent, and Brent is about to say something else. He has something else. <laughs> uh, and we have a new website, the portalct.com. Cool. Portalct.com. So new website, new store layout. Uh, so a lot happened. I mean, so we can definitely transition into the store, right? Um, and this is the reason why I wanted, you know, both you guys to, to appear on the show. I don't have any questions besides like how. <laughs> how? Yeah. You guys renovated, you guys, you know, new website, you know, cycling and, you know, keeping the, the staff employed and, um, you know, like you guys had such a, a, a huge gaming night, like you had Thursdays and Sundays were board gaming and then you had magic it's on Fridays and then like other days as well. Like there was just so much going on and all of a sudden, poof. yeah. So then like, tell me a little bit about like those beginning months and maybe we can kind of start from there. Yeah. Um, so Larry and I were actually out, we went to Gamma, which was like the middle of March, right? So we're out there, you know, meeting up with all the publishers and, you know, some had pulled out, like, so it was kind of a mixed bag. Not everyone was going. Um, we, we start like, like the middle of the week, everything starts kind of changing. Like the world is just kind of going through everything like NBA, NHL, like all those things kind of ended up postponing, canceling or whatnot. Yeah, so NBA and Tom Hanks. That's what we knew. Yeah. <laughs> so we were like flying back and the world had shifted. Like, you know, if if we were coming back into our our normal run rate, we wouldn't have had toilet paper for, you know, <laughs> for the people that were coming in and playing games. But so, yeah, we got back middle of March. Uh, we were kind of trying to figure out, like, what what are we looking at? Let's cut back tables. Let's make it like you know, make sure everyone washes their hands, we're cleaning, doing all this stuff. Um, so very end of March, I believe that was when we kind of had to shut down and at least like close our doors. We couldn't really ha- be open to the public in the same sense that we were used to being. Mm-hmm. Uh, so around that point, we, we switched gears. We were like, we just figured this is the time to kind of reset. Like retail never has a pause. <laughs> like it's like yeah, right. basically... I'm off Thanksgiving and Christmas and (laughs) outside of that, the world's just moving, you know? So like we kind of reset, we sat together, just figured out like, what, what do we want this store to look like? How do we want to change it up? Kind of make it so it'll be fresh when people come back to things, Mm -hmm. which it it gave us a great opportunity to try to kind of reset, figure out like what, what our goals were. Uh, A lot of what we were trying to do, we wanted to open the store up a little bit make it a little more accessible to everyone that was coming in that may or may not have any idea what they're hopping into. 
Mm-hmm. Um, and certain areas we definitely wanted to focus a bit. So it was, it was a good way to kind of reset all that and make it, make it functional again. Right. And kind of put our own spin on it. Um, so well, like the, the old store that I remember the old store, right. Yeah. Uh, way <laughs> yeah. back in the, in the way back days, like you would come in and like, it would just be like a game sensation, like right in your face. And I could see that yeah. being a little bit overwhelming. Like the first thing you'd see, so like, you're trying to kind of visual, like, visually represent it. You come in and like to the immediate left, like against the wall uh, would be just like a a row of like smaller games. Right. And then right in front of your eye line would be this kind of Island thing. And there'd be like new games and then there'd be paints and like minis. And it was just like this kind of like, like toy sensation, just (laughs) as you walked in the door. (laughs) Um, Is that kind of what you're talking about? Like in terms of like redressing that maybe a little more access or like, uh, I mean, what are some of the things that you were kind of going into in terms of of the model? So essentially we were trying to visualize like what someone sees when they walk into the store, right? So right when you get in, we didn't want it to be something where you're feeling immediately claustrophobic. Uh, Like we wanted it to be pretty open. So you kind of had a sense of like what you were getting into. Uh, Along with that, there was, there were a few key categories, like, like board games are, are really good as like a family and you know like, like there's definitely a good mix right you're getting families that are interested you're getting just casual people that are playing some stuff on the side so we wanted to have a few of those key games really focused so people could see them you know like maybe Catan or ticket to ride or something like that where King of Tokyo. Can come in, yeah and see that uh we have a section where we can kind of put up like a little display so kind of like a preview or a demo sort of thing obviously without having people sit sit down and play it but you can come in there'll be a game laid out and you can kind of see what what the games look like that are out there today mm-hmm. right and then a lot of like the the warhammer stuff we tried to like uh to make that a little bit more presentable kind of have the, mm-hmm. the boxes like the start collecting boxes really showcased so people could see see the options that are out there for that sort of mm-hmm. stuff so, so like COVID presented like a challenge and opportunity, so to speak, if, at least yeah, on that one level. Of yeah, we tried to make the most going. out of it. Mm-hmm. And, you know, like there were a couple of displays that weren't, weren't the best. So we kind of moved on from those and really did some of the like, you know, <laughs> did some stuff to tear, tear things down that didn't need to be there, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, essentially to me, when you walked in, you were kind of talking about that like sensation, but it was almost like over the top. It's like when Bell walks into Beast's library, you know, <laughs> Beauty and the Beast, and it's just floor to ceiling. There's so many books and books and books, but nobody knows what books are in there, right. where they are. I don't know. There's somewhere here. And it, it's almost overwhelming. Like maybe I shouldn't touch the books. There's so many. And we want it to be more like, um, like a showroom floor, right? Like mm-hmm. when we go to some of the conventions. So we set up booths that are kind of at that right height where you can be playing stuff and seeing stuff, obviously knowing with COVID that touching things gonna be trickier, but even just having games that are visually set up for people to see. So it's not even necessarily a demo, it's mm-hmm. just a visual. You can kind of see that piece. And then I think the other big part is that when you have a lot of games, they're all stored like this. And that's fine, but you're trying to sell or beyond sell, just have people see a game like this. Mm-hmm. You want games to be like this. So now you can see that cover and you know what this game is about and whatnot. So now when you walk in the store, almost every game that's in your eyesight from the door, and trust me, we did this a lot, is facing <laughs> out at you. Right. So that mm-hmm. you're seeing all those games, and we got all those to purposely face out. And then, you know, where we needed to get more games in, we, we had to put them sideways to hold everything. But even on that, we just really kind of pared back. Like, okay, what are we going to carry? Yeah, we kind of want to carry everything, but in reality, we can't. So let's make sure we really know what we're carrying and why we're carrying it uh, and stuff like that. And then putting all the minis together and putting paints and having a spot where there could be a paint table. And we massively decreased the area kind of behind the counter because, you know, you got one, two, three employees working. They don't need gobs and gobs and gobs of space. So we we did that. And then we kind of pushed all the magic cards together. So there's kind of one spot Mm -hmm. where they kind of floated all around out there. Um, uh, speaking of magic, I'm that I'm most curious about that because I think, in some ways, magic is kind of the lifeblood of stores, right? Because there's you know there's so many packs that always like you know bringing things in. Uh, you could tell me if I'm wrong, but like I feel like the the loss of that, the loss of like having you know um, you know commander night or or whatever, you know Friday night you know draft. 
Like, I feel like the loss of that would sting more. Is that a, is that correct assessment or? Uh, I mean, it's, it is one of the tent poles. Like it's like one of those key categories that we want to make sure we've got because, you know, there is a huge following for it. And, you know, like a lot of, a lot of, like most people on staff play or have played. So it's just kind of one of those games that is easy. Like people love getting into it too, right? Like it's just fun to see someone hop into that game. So while all this is going on, right? Like there, there have been, there have been a few magic sets that have been coming out. Mm -hmm. It's, it's nowhere near the level that we would normally be doing. Um, But I know we're, we're also operating like with most of it being like retail sales instead of having um, like events where we prize out. And, you know, usually the events that we're, we're running, we're operating at a lower margin or we're trying to just trying to get people to come in and do that and really make the like, you know, just have activity going on. So then like with that activity kind of drum up more sales. So it's not necessarily like having that same sort of, you know, that same sort of margin on an event is not our goal. So without any events, we've kind of been focused on stuff that might be a little bit more, you know, financially viable, more consistent. And I guess the one main area where we've, we've really been lacking, like we haven't really been taking in a lot of, um, magic singles Mm. so like we're not we don't have this like ebb and flow that we would have if people were playing events trading in cards doing all these things that's that's an area where we really don't have much to speak for right now but outside of that like wizards of the coast has been releasing a ton of product this year and they're they're doing a ton to help out stores too so Mm. it's, it's been really nice like they're they're being very amenable to this and a lot of the like, like they've kind of pushed back. So there's no like, I don't believe in North America, they're doing like they're allowing any sanctioned events or anything like that. So mostly it's just saying like, you know, be safe about this Mm -hmm. stores, just we'll let this open up so you can kind of have, have a different way to operate. Mm -hmm. Cause I know like if people are familiar with it, usually when a set, like the week before a set actually releases, there's a big event, there's a pre-release where you're usually, we usually, you know, are either selling out or close to selling out. And that's 150 to 180 seats that usually we have people coming in and playing for, right? So without all that going on, like Wizards has really opened it up so people can take those home and do those events at home. You know, and even though we're not necessarily at the same level that we were with you know, with events going on, at least we're having something going going out right. there. And people it's can funny. play with the new cards. It's funny you mentioned that, like, you know, you, you know, you hear, you talk about, like, you know, things having to adjust. So, like, you know, I'm a psychotherapist. I'm doing this now. <laughs> this is yeah. my psychotherapy. And Brand is a teacher. And you're doing this now, too, right, Brand? Yeah. How is well, it? I'm doing this with seven to ten students in the room at the same time. What? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Man, there's seven to ten Physi- uh, pre- students physically present in front of me and another 10 to 15 on zoom and you and, and it's just you and i'm teaching to both oh great yeah <laughs> <laughs> it's uh it's a once in a lifetime experience hopefully not more than that <laughs> good lord yeah, yeah. I, so i was going to mention too like brian was saying i mean a, a key part of the portal because of course the portal goes back to the time machine days too and and even to our town, East Hampton, but so the, the time mean, machine is a toy store. Yeah, across the street. Right sorry. across the street. So just to uh, clarify, this this is going out to the world, man. <laughs> no worries. No worries. So Not everyone knows. So there was some tie there, but I mean, there really is. There's like a war game crowd. There's you know miniatures games, and there's kind of your straight up like 40k, but then there's are like miniatures across the board players, board gamers, family games, um, you know, just supplies for games. And uh, so there are a lot of people, there's no doubt that magic sells a lot, you know, even in comparison to those, but you do have all of those different one, people that have been used to coming to the, to that area, to that store, you know, for 30 years. So, well, 20 years, I guess, to that area. Mm-hmm. Um, so there's a lot of that. And then, you know, it was interesting when we were closed, we still had curbside. And especially in the first couple of weeks, people were really doing that, especially paints paintbrushes, mm, new minis, 
Like people knew they were going to be home. Like I'm going right, to be home yeah. and I'm going to be watching like the back to the future series. Right. <laughs> so I'm just going to paint minis. I'm going to paint and paint and paint and paint. And like mm-hmm. we were selling paint a lot mm-hmm. because I know it was like not stuck. We we're trying to get more paint. Um, and people were even coming in to buy like Clank. And I remember like Paladins of the West Kingdom. Somebody wanted to play for like the solo mode. You know, it was just interesting. People knew like what they were grabbing. And, and I remember because we just, we had games everywhere. I mean, there were just, where is this game? And we're all right. just like, hunting around trying to find a game for Brian because there were no more shells. It was just things torn asunder and games stacked up all over the place. So even wow. when the, like the shutdown happened and like things were, and we were in Connecticut, right? So like we got it first. Like New York was one of the real early hotspots and Connecticut is right next to New York. And so we got, you know, like just go home right now. Uh, and so the curbside community really kind of picked up a lot of the slack. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. So it was at least, it was an outlet. Like we were definitely not, you know, it, it wasn't sustainable, but it was something okay. to have something. Know, that back and forth, especially with like, you know, just, with us working and kind of resetting, it was really just me on like on on the clock at that point, just doing what I could to kind of have something go up there. And then, you know, while we were working, we had our phones open, like the, you know, like Facebook or whatnot. Like basically those were the two outlets that people would reach out to us mm-hmm. and just ask like, do you have this? Or, you know, can I pick this up? How can we do all this? So mm-hmm. it was at least something, it, it helped a ton at the end of May when we were able to open up and like unlock our doors, uh, we didn't like jump right back into our normal schedule. Like it's still, it's still really pared down. Like we're open most days, 12 to eight instead of like 12 to 11 or midnight. So it's Mm -hmm. cut back to like, you know, one person shifts essentially. And then Saturday we're open 10 to six because we shifted a little for that early morning crowd or whatnot. Mm -hmm. So yeah. So it's definitely like it, we're not like, firing on all, all cylinders right now, but it's at least like we're we're going through, we're starting to see new things come out a little bit more frequently. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, you know, a lot of companies are, are feeling the same pressure of like, like supply is, is an issue. Like it's a big, <laughs> a big deal right now <laughs> where it's just tough to get certain things. Right. And I, I remember you or, um, so I called you up and I ordered the Pursuit of Happiness Experiences, which is, um, I love Pursuit of Happiness and I'm going to be, you, you, you'll hear a little bit more about that pretty soon from me. Uh, anyway, so I, I called you up and I remember like, I, I was like, okay, do you have it? No. Can you order it? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I'll get it next week. I don't know. I'm like, really? That's how it is. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Those supply lines are all over the map. Wow. So yeah, even like, yeah, right? shipments are, are adjusting, you know, like it's just, everything's kind of, feeling some sort of repercussion for, you know, just from what it used to be. So Mm -hmm. we're, I'm, I'm never really, I never feel comfortable promising or guaranteeing anything these days until like it's physically in my hands, you know? Right. Mm -hmm. So, and that's just, that's just an adjustment. And like, everyone's been awesome. Like our customer base is really, it's, it's just great, you know? So everyone's really just open to that everyone kind of has that same sort of like everyone wants to be playing, but people know that like, it's, you know, a little more responsible to be, you know, let's, let's see what we can do to do to wait till this is correct and responsible, you know? Mm -hmm. So like the community has really responded. Like they're uh, like, even when they come in, people are kind of behaving, they're wearing their masks They're you know, they don't need to be prompted to wear, you know, like doing the hand washing thing and all that. No, everyone's, everyone's understandable. And it's just like, it's, it's one of those things in some ways, like, like it would, it would really have hurt us if we were the only place in the world that had this going on, right? Like if, sure. <laughs> if this was a disaster that happened at our facility, you know, then we'd be sunk. But because it's like, everyone has to re reset, like, you know, it'll be interesting. I, I'm still trying to figure out like what, what we're going to be going into next year, right? Like a lot of people are. And I, I, everyone's kind of got those same questions like, oh, are you going to be doing this? Or are you going to be doing that? We really have no idea. Like it's going to really right. depend on what people are looking to get back into once, once it's responsible. <laughs> and you know, once are there even going to be planes? Like you're talking about airlines cutting half their staff. And like you, you mentioned before going to Gamma, is you, are people even going to be able to fly? 
Right. You know, so like they, that's a whole, you know, bunch of things which are way beyond our pay grade. Yeah. <laughs> um, you mentioned before that Watsi was helping. And um, I'm wondering how much other sources you're getting either from the gaming industry or even outside of it. Like, you know, the, the government had the uh, American government had that PPE um, loan thing for small businesses. Uh, maybe some like local things were going on. So maybe talk a little bit about what um, supports that you've gotten that wouldn't ordinarily be there to help you through COVID. Yeah. So the, that did help the PPE or like that was one one way that we were able to kind of ride out that initial, <laughs> that initial shutdown and right. you know, lock the doors, do curbside. So that was good for that that front. Though, you know, like just finding that information is, it's kind of going through the weeds, right? Like you're, <laughs> we're definitely hearing one announcement and then we're talking to a different group. So it's just kind of figuring out how to stumble through that. Mm-hmm. And that was kind of that that initial, that initial thing was just. A little more difficult than it had to be but you know it was just everyone kind of had to figure that out too right. so that that helped a ton uh publishers have been awesome this year too like mm. there are so many so many things like i was trying to keep my eyes open for anything and everything that was a uh, here we're trying to help you <laughs> do this and <laughs> you know because it was i know like they they recognized that we were we were hurting because it was it was a different mode for us. Obviously right. like it was a part, part of a matter of, you know, of evolving, kind of figuring out like what we needed to do differently, mm-hmm. but so many programs were out there. I, I know I would miss them if I <laughs> started spewing them off on the, the fly, but, um, but we did try to like with everything that came in, we've, we've been trying to restock and really we got a ton of, a ton of games from those places that, that did offer that those programs up there. Nice. So I, it's been really appreciated. Like there, there's been a really good back and forth with that. Mm-hmm. And everyone's like, you know, so many people are trying to help out and do what they can. And obviously it's not like we're the highest priority out there. Like we want, we love playing games. We, we think it's a great outlet for people to, to, you know, to do something together with a community or family or friends or whatnot. So mm-hmm. it's, it's been really nice and obviously it's not ideal this year, but, but we're adjusting, you know? Mm-hmm. And Brent, you're Mr. Outreach over there. Like when you are, when I go to a con with you, you are always buzzing around. I played a game with this person. I played, I did that person. Um, I know you started the the YouTube channel, but um, what has been like, how have you, like, you know, have you experienced like online reaching out? Like, has it been the same or have you been able to kind of maintain the same enthusiasm, have the same reach? Have you tried different strategies for reaching out to people? So I, I tried to do a couple like online conventions and it was nice. You can go in discord and I could put like, you know, Brant from the portal gaming podcast, but it was hard even to connect with people, you know, publishers were there to kind of push their games and I could have a couple of side conversations. I've, I've tried to mail publishers uh, and things for people. I have had a lot of good conversations with content creators mm. that I've been able to, you know, FaceTime or uh, Zoom or whatever. So that's that's been good. Um, I, on the like, you know, reviewing side, I've definitely felt the loss of not being at the conventions. Like gotcha. whether I get access to play the games or whether the publishers give me the games, because probably like a good 75% of the games I get come from publishers at conventions uh, in terms of all that. But actually, a great story on the, the publisher side was uh, a couple shout outs. So W. Eric Martin at BGG, he created a whole list of uh, publishers that were doing like, hey, if you buy from our website and type in a store, we'll give money back. So I was able to take that and post it on our like community page. Oh, nice. So that was a great way for people to know like, oh, you know, if we don't have it at the store or I'm looking for a new game from Portal Games or whatever it is, I can go there. I can type in the portal in Connecticut and it will send part of the funds over. So that was huge. And funny enough, like people were helping us track that. Uh, Japanime Games was, I was, I think. They contacted Eric Summer <laughs> from the Dice Tower <laughs> and they were like, Eric, do you know what this portal thing is? We, we were not able to find it. We weren't given an address. So then Eric calls me up and he's, or uh, he wrote me an email. Um, but we're good friends. He would call me. Call me Eric. um, <laughs> Eric's been but, by the by the store many times at this point. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But he kind of t- contacted me. He's like, "Oh, Brent, I've got this thing from Japanime Games." So people were networking the whole time, you know, even in like the Dice Tower Slack channel and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. 
so definitely a lot of networking on the like content creator end was happening. Um, I, I would have liked to find a way to do more with publishers. I really wanted to try to help them with mm -hmm. reviewing their games, but I think they're trying to figure out all that stuff and what they're going right. to delay and what they're going to do. I, I didn't find online conventions that much, but I'm such a people person that, you yeah. know, a couple, I did get to play um, Terraforming Mars on the digital app with Bonacore the day before he announced his retirement. So I didn't even know that that was kind of like a last chance to play with him. So that was really mm -hmm. cool uh, being able to do that. So I, I did enjoy that because we had like discord running and we could talk. Yeah. So that makes a big difference to me if I'm playing a game with people online and I can talk to them Sure. Uh, because that's all I do is talk. Yeah. You're, <laughs> you're God's gift, the, the energy, the engine for game playing and, and then talking about them. It's unbelievable. Yeah. I don't know if I'm a Rado, but I'm getting there. <laughs> um. I think, okay, so the, the big question for me, and, and I, thank you very much, guys. I, they, I, I feel like I understand a lot more, and I hope that the audience also understands a lot, lot more. This is not easy. You know, I think hearing, you know, kind of reading under the surface of, you know, what Brant and Brian are saying is like, it is not easy. It's, it's taking a lot of energy and creativity and situativeness to make it work. And so I guess the big question is, is this at all sustainable? You know, like, you know, you've made a bunch of changes and, you know, the portal is still there, right? And I can go and, you know, I'm, if, you know, hopefully Connecticut stays COVID free, you know, I'm getting the email saying, you know, West Hartford schools, more COVID, more COVID, whatever, whatever. Um, but the, you know, the portal's there for now. And, and, and if we recover, we're going to be there. But like, if this keeps on going, you know, like, is this a sustainable model, what, what you got to do? Or, do? or does it have to be like, you know, do, do you have to kind of really think about, you know, other or, or something else, you know, along other lines? Yeah, I mean, it's, I, I think we'd have to, we'd have to further change things up. You know, like we'd have to go a little farther on if it's content, which was part of the reason, like we wanted to get stuff going a little bit more. So get, you know, get that YouTube going, like you just have more stuff out there. Um, like we we would still have to kind of do do a little bit more to to step it up if if this is looking like it's going to go on for the foreseeable future right mm -hmm. because right now like it feels like we're kind of on like walking that that thin line where it's like it doesn't take much either way <laughs> you know because i feel like the summer was was actually pretty strong like compared to like what it you know what it normally might be especially considering like we cut back hours so mm -hmm. you know, we weren't doing as much as far as like, like our payroll and you know all those other variable costs weren't as high so we were able to like to kind of balance that a little bit but i'm feeling it a little bit more right now where people are kind of settling back into something like people are going back to school um you know, whatever it is like stuff's changing up a little bit where now I'm not seeing that consistency that like when everyone was off and had free time, they were just kind of like picking stuff up to like to play with family or paint and build. And it's, it's feeling a little bit more tight right now than it was okay. a month ago. And obviously like every year there kind of is a little bit of that ebb and flow. Like this time of year is never like particularly strong, especially cause it's like, yeah, it's between everyone being off mm -hmm. and that holiday season where, you know, it typically ramps up quite a bit. Right. So like I said, like it's, it feels like every kind of, everything's a little bit on, on the edge. Like, <laughs> right. And, you know, I'm not necessarily going as, as deep on certain things that, that I could like, like I was saying, like magic has had a ton of stuff out there and it's felt like we could have gone a lot higher than what we did, but every now and then like there was just a new a new pre-release last weekend so a new set is coming out this week and i don't know it i can't tell if it's going to be something that sells out within the first week or if it's something that's going to be sitting and we're going to have it for you know for the next couple months right, right. and i'm guessing like i'm guessing it's it just kind of takes a little bit of that extra effort like like these days it's just going to be adjust a little bit and if we're looking at like a longer, a longer period, we're going to have to kind of take another step farther. So there's bullets left in the chamber, you know, so like there's, there's things left to try. 
you know, obviously we don't want this to keep on going, but there are still resources there. There's still room for creativity. There's still kind of, um, you know, if, as, if things kind of change and permutate, what I'm hoping is that we've gotten better at COVID at the very least. And like, we, we don't have to like go into like hard shutdown and, you know, right. all that stuff that we can kind of like adjust and, you know, actually learn. And, yeah. you know, and in those spaces that are created, like we can continue to support local businesses and, you know, all that kind of thing. Like, I, And that's something that we're kind of working in just locally in here, West Hartford. Like, you know, let's take care of the bagel store. Let's take care of the local ice cream, you know, the things that we want, you yeah. know, uh, Target will be fine. <laughs> like right now, if, um, if we had to shut down or anything like that, like that would really, that would hurt us now. Because that first wave where we had to shut down and do curbside, you know, we were able to kind of go through it, obviously, like with the government stuff going out there, like that was helpful. Right now, if we had to do that, like, like that's also partially why we haven't taken another step toward toward gaming, right? Like we could jump through some hoops and have a suboptimal experience of people coming in and playing something. We'd really have to up it with cleaning and just monitoring and all that sort of stuff. Ventilation we, and all we that. We could do it, yeah. But, you know, if someone came in and they were sick, like we couldn't prevent our facility from like potentially spreading that, right? Now, if we were looking at quarantining staff or or shutting down for a deep clean for, you know, a week or two or whatever it takes, like that, that would be, that would be painful now. <laughs> so... Mm -hmm. that's kind of where a lot of this is like, you know, we're at least kind of coasting by a little bit at this point and we'll see how the next, the next few months go. Like the bigger, the telling, the telling months will be November, December and see how that, that holiday season is like, because, you know, without having people come in on like on the fly and just doing all these, like these events, like, mm -hmm. It's just unknown right now. So <laughs> or like just grabbing the random stocking stuffer, which yeah. I imagine is, you know, like someone comes in intending to buy one thing. It's like, oh, I can get this for this person, this for that person. And then they walk in with like a little armful of stuff in a, in a normal time. Jason, just remind me, I need to pick up Keyforge decks for our <laughs> stocking stuffers. <laughs> They're still releasing really yeah, Keyforge? Yeah. It's just fun to open. Like I always play with Kathy on Christmas morning because it's just fun to open two decks and play them. And then like I never see them again. <laughs> But, um, Disposable game. We got we got lots of ideas. I mean, Larry and I are like the ideas guys, and then Brian has to implement those ideas. Yeah, right. <laughs> but we've got a lot a lot of good things. I mean, this YouTube channel is the one that Brian really got behind because he's been awesome in like buying us equipment and everything to set all that up and and space and setting aside everything and just really just being like, go for it, go for it, go for it. Because we know those game nights are where we go and we get access to games. Right? You you've been there, and mm -hmm. maybe you know whatever it is, uh, five out of 10, seven out of 10 games, you're like, oh, this is fun, but I think I'll pass. But these three, these were really good. So that's what we're trying to do is bring those games to people that could see those games and be like, oh, here it is. It's actually kind of fun to even go back. Like we're playing unmatched against each other. I just forgot mm. unmatched is so good. And now people get to see it and all the different themes. And that's just a great game for people to be able to pick up. So, you know, you get a chance to kind of go back and focus on those things. And people have been playing at home with their families a lot more. You know, it's tough. Like you said, your daughter doesn't want to play everything with you, but there's stuff that they, they do want to play, you know, and you right. get to do that kind of stuff and you do get a chance. Like, you know, I started painting minis. Like, I don't even, I don't even think I like painting minis, but I painted <laughs> Star Wars Legion and it was really fun. And then, you know, Kathy and Zephyr picked up stuff, my wife and daughter, and they started painting too. So we just got a chance to like do that as a family. And meanwhile, we're, we're buying stuff from the store. So we're able to support uh, there and kind of, you know, garner, garner a new hobby. So um, yeah, you just got to keep ideas in there and, and keep thinking about how you, how you can reach people and what people want to see. We took a long time. I mean, it was fighting. It was healthy fighting for sure, but trying to figure out like, how are we going to put all these games on the shelf and right. what are we going to do and how do we organize everything? And I mean, Oh my gosh. Because, because Brian was in charge of the curbside. I think Larry and I went in like several mornings at like 8 a.m. and set up all the shelves. And then Brian came in with the devil's advocate like, well, I don't think that's going to work. You're going to have to take them all down. And we did that so many times. But finally, I actually really liked the idea that we came to, which is you walk in right to the left. There's games on the shelf. And it's kind of your top 100. I wouldn't actually call mm -hmm. it top 100 BGG. It's like top 100 
family and yeah, like dice and- tower is people's choice yeah totally like mm-hmm. you buy a game there I'd be shocked if somebody didn't think that was at least a great game, if not a phenomenal game. We've right. just put the best of the best right there. Mm-hmm. And now people come in and they're kind of looking around the wall. And I'm like, well, what do you like? Do you like smashing up different things? Or do you like kind of word games for mm-hmm. code names? Or do you want to play a story driven game with above and below? Are you looking for, you know, mini style game? Or do you want a, a, a co-op, you know, horror style game? We got Mansions of Madness. Like, Can I interest right you in there. Marvel Champions? <laughs> Marvel Champions, yeah, we'll, we ton, we sold a ton of Marvel Champions Rise of the Red Skull, which is why we kept playing on the YouTube channel because mm. so many people have been interested in it. And uh, we sold right through the batch that we ordered, we nice. allocated, and then we another batch. So, I mean, that's been selling like crazy. So mm-hmm. it is funny. We've been playing it, but a lot of people at the store picked it up, especially in the last two, three months. So mm-hmm. it's done really well. Well, uh, thank you guys so much. Um, I I learned a lot in this conversation, you know, because I've been kind of doing my own thing. Uh, You know, I'm busier than ever in terms of my practice. And I started a YouTube channel. So I'm trying to like, you know, figure this out. But it's really awesome to connect. One of these days, Brand, we'll we'll meet in the flesh. Yeah, yeah. One of these... One of these days. <laughs> did I miss anything? Is there anything, any aspect of the store experience uh, that I did not ask a question about that you think that would be important to know? I'm sure there is, but I can't think of it. <laughs> I have one. So it. I think it's important, you know, if you have a local store and there's the whole debate of like, is my local store a friendly local store? But whatever. If there's a store that you went to that you really liked, like be part of that community. Your store owner wants, you know, it to be a community. So, so go in and if you have some ideas, ask them. You can't push your ideas on somebody, but say, hey, could, you know, could we try thinking about this or that or the other thing? Or, or what could I do to help support you or whatever it is? I mean, mm-hmm. I, I give a huge shout out to Brian. He's awesome because, you know, like I said, Larry and I got ideas for days, but he's the one who's got to get them implemented and, 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 you know, put money or time or whatever it is behind them. Um, but, uh, you know, pe- people are, are in this. They're owning stores because they want to see that community. They want to see all that grow. And, uh, that's the best part of a friendly local game store. We we can buy games in other places cheaper. Do they know about online sales? <laughs> uh, so people know they can buy games cheaper, but that shouldn't be the main thing that a store is doing. Also, I mean, Impulse, I, I, I still go into our own store and I'm like, oh, you have this? This came in? I'm buying this today. So that's also a fun part. Yeah, I me. bought Pandemic Hot Zone on just that Impulse. I'm like, ooh, you have what? <laughs> there you go. Nice. Awesome. All right. Well, thank you guys so much. Uh, give us the, I know we uh, did a lot of hype at the beginning of the podcast, but you get to do it again. Uh, all the different channels in which uh, the portal, uh, we can access you guys up in Manchester, Connecticut. Sure. So the website is the portal um, We have like a portal pay a portal, Facebook page, the portal. Uh, and then our YouTube channel is step into the portal. The podcast is the Portal Gaming Podcast. You can see a theme running through all of this uh, in terms of all that. So those are all the places that you can reach us and mostly hear my voice. So (laughs) I'm the voice of the store. That's what I've been declared. So uh, you can see all that stuff. And then on Twitter, I'm uh, at Portal Gaming 60. And Brian, just go through Brant, right? (laughs) (laughs) Or show up at the store. It's going to be you behind it. So just actually show up physically and you'll be, you'll be back there uh, handing out games. So, yeah. <laughs> Maybe. All right. Uh, so thank you very much, guys. Uh, good luck. We will definitely not be strangers. Uh, so that was another shelf story for you. I hope that you enjoyed it. Uh, so this is Jason reminding you that if you can change your mind, you can change the world. So until next time, later, everybody. Thank you, Jason.